Okay, um, I'm going to be trying my hand at this uh, OBS response video thing. Found a video by a YouTuber named Vouch uh, responding to Mr. Steven Crowder on a video he did about body positivity or fat acceptance. So there's going to be a decent amount of cringe to be had here. Which is Dude, I think I've only talked about body positivity once, and it was about men. Who are actually marginalized. And here's the thing, there's an empathy bank for everybody. A lot of people don't like to admit this, but we have a certain bandwidth of empathy. And we can't just be passing out empathy like donuts covered in Skittles. Who was the person who just asked if reactionaries have empathy? Who was, which one of you did that? Now, I, I'm curious, does this dude actually use the term uh, reactionary properly in context? Um, a lot of people use the term reactionary to describe, you know, people who react very enthusiastically or angrily or whatever, bombastically or knee jerk. It's not really what a reactionary is, but I mean, I don't know. I, we'll see. We'll see what this dude knows and what doesn't know. I'm glad one of you named right on after me. I love you. Right on. You, you certainly are a very heavy rock type. Question. Maybe ground or mud type. Today, let me start this off on a scale uh, from one to 10. How much empathy do you have for the modern day fat pride movement and is thin privilege a thing i like how he's talking about empathy here like this is how psychopaths talk okay he couldn't he couldn't be like hey how much respect do you have or hey you know how much do you believe like none of that just empathy as though disagreeing with someone means that you get to stop feeling empathy for them no vouch i, I think what it means is that uh there's a certain limit to the amount of empathy one could or maybe even should feel for someone who claims a sort of oppression status when all of their grievances in life or most of their grievances in life are due to self-inflicted uh, sort of circumstances, i.e. obese people. Um, you feel empathy for them to a very limited extent, but I think compassion would probably be the preferable uh, setting, you know, let's get you on a good diet. Let's get you on a good exercise regimen. Uh, and no, that's not concern trolling necessarily. Uh, and if it is, who gives a shit? It's still good advice. It's still, um, what one should be doing if they're an obese person, but no, it's not, it's not that you're a psychopath. If you lack empathy for someone who has self-inflicted issues and they don't have any desire to change after a certain point, that's bullshit, but do continue. Uh, let me know below, because the new social justice crusade is to expand this idea of privilege to... Crusade? Okay, alright, here. This is gonna... Oh, I can tell this is gonna be a good fucking four-hour-long analysis, even though he's gonna say nothing over and over again. Let's fucking do it. Well, kind of like you, though. I mean, uh, I I've watched this video. You don't quite respond to much. You know, you, you, you're intentionally pedantic or obsessive over certain semantic things, much like Steven Crowder sometimes, like in his debate with, uh, what was his face? Janusz or Yusef or whatever, when he focused on the word autistic. You, you kind of do a similar thing, but we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, let me know below, because the new social justice crusade is to expand this idea of privilege to every possible area. I mean, not really. Privilege is, as a concept pretty like a like it exists whether you like it or not there's tall privilege there's handsome privilege there's big dick privilege absolutely the question is which of these privileges are severe enough and which of these privileges are socially affected enough that we can work to change them and maybe make the world a little bit more of a fair place oh geez that kindergarten logic okay big dick privilege is immutable characteristics you know, or tall privilege, whatever, that's, that's an immutable characteristic, which falls accurately under the classification of a privilege, thin privilege, or like fit privilege, or whatever, that's, that can't, I don't think that's a valid concept, because usually, barring, you know, some sort of uh, genetic abnormality, or whatever, uh, you work to be fit, or thin, or in shape, generally speaking, or you have some degree of self-discipline, it's apples and oranges. That's a bad comparison. Big dick privilege is, and it may not even be necessarily a privilege. I mean, some, some people probably can't, you know, accommodate a, a, a big, big honking lap, lap meat, you know, I, I, he's all over the place.
And there was this video uh, not too long ago, and they've been expanding upon this, actually, doing more videos. But this is the one that I think is the most egregious uh, about terrible. thin <laughs> privilege. Um, let's just well, let, let's go through this piece by piece, and you'll see why I'm so disturbed. Imagine unironically believing that thin people don't have social privilege over fat people. That thin people. Imagine, like, believing that, like, uh, you don't agree with me. No, it's not privilege. It's something they fucking earned, dude, okay? By not eating Chinese takeout and frozen pizzas for every meal. What are you talking about? People aren't generally taken more seriously, that they don't generally have more opportunities in life, certainly on, like, a social and romantic basis. Now, what you could argue, Stephen Crowder... Wait, I thought that I thought that nobody was entitled to any sort of social validation or sex. I thought that's what the feminists were harping on. You're not entitled to anyone's body or anyone's approval. It sounds like you're you're this is like entitlement on your part. Does it not? Am I misreading you, Vosh? If you were an intelligent person, is that thin privilege <laughs> is real, but it's fine that people who are fat act in ways which lead to them being fat, that's their choice, and that thin people are only privileged because people find thin people more attractive, which, historically speaking, tends to be fairly consistently, not always, but fairly consistently the case. So you could say, yeah, thin privilege exists, and that's fine. There's also smart privilege and an athletically proficient privilege. What should we make? Should we get rid of stairs and make everything a ramp so wheelchaired people can get around just as easy as us with legs? No, it's that neither the concept of thin privilege, like, nor is it not fine. Like, both of those are true. It's fine to have a meritocratic system where people find you more attractive if you're fit and you demonstrate, uh, you know, traits like self-discipline, that sort of thing. And this is, by the way, this is coming from me. Like, I'm, I'm, I guess, basically a thin guy, but I'm like skinny fat sort of, you know, I'm in my early to mid 30s. You know, I, I got, you know, you can't really see. I haven't figured out my webcam set up yet, but you can't really see. I, I have a little bit of a gullet or, or gut going on right here. Um, it's the, And the reason for that is that I lack a certain degree of self-discipline. I don't, you know, I, I like junk food. I like to, you know, eat pizza and cookies and chips, stay up till 4 a.m., drinking, you know, coffee and shit, playing video games. I like to do that just as much as anyone. And I face consequences for that. And that's fine, you know? I don't understand, like... I, you could make that argument. You would still be wrong, but it would at least be a more cogent argument than arguing that thin privilege doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist because you earned it. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Okay, this might just be me repeating myself like 80,000 times. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how far I can get. Thin privilege. Now, it's not a mythical creature or something made up. If you're uh. thin, you have a certain privilege. No. Or if you're perceived... So here we have, like, you know, I think everybody's seen this video by the BBC at this point, this horribly mixed audio of this uh, portly, plump, uh, young lass basically talking about how society is putting her in a crosshairs because she chooses to eat, you know, chocolate-covered donuts. You know, we'll, we'll continue You have to be thin and healthy in the eyes of society. You have that privilege. What the everyday tasks... Is this actually the audio balancing in the original video? Because this music audio is... I just got a really emotionally weighty super chat. But I am not a hypocrite, and I must and I must wait until the end of the video. But until I get around to it, not me. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Right, dude, okay. That a thinner person can take for granted. I can leave a plus-sized person like myself feel full of anxiety, burden, and upset, and feelings that they don't belong and don't deserve a place in the earth. So... I, this it's not that you don't deserve a place on the earth. It's that, I mean, it's it's kind of like if there's a shortage of parking spaces, you know, you can't just snap your fucking fingers and make a parking space appear out of thin air. We can't we can't come up with you know extra seats where they don't exist to park your ass. It's kind of the same thing. We can't just snap our fingers and make like. You, you have extra matter in reality, in space. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't. <sighs> Audio balancing is so fucking atrocious. Plus her disgusting Brit bonger accent. Listen, okay, fuck fat people, fuck, fuck thin people. British people are subhuman, all right? <laughs> British people.
Yeah, one, one thing I do like about Vow, she's actually, unlike most leftists, he's actually capable of being humorous. Um, you know, so I, I, I kind of do enjoy Vouch, but he's just wrong. So. Public transport. What a nightmare for plus size people. Just think. Can you sit in a seat and not be met with signs, puffing, puffing, and someone squirming in a seat next to you, making you feel uncomfortable? Okay. And no, no. You... First off, Ma- making you feel uncomfortable. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. You're making them feel uncomfortable by uh, oozing into their space. Just, just, and I think I think Crowder's about to go into the man spreading thing where feminists try to attack men for sitting the way that they sit because they have tested. Didn't privilege include equalizing audio levels? What could you? Just, <laughs> okay, or, yeah, for audio. what? There we go. Stephen yeah. Crowder, my audio new levels, comp. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, all yeah. Brit bongers can just lip like lip read because their accents are so disgusting. They don't actually rely on their ears anymore. They just they just <laughs> look at the mouth, so they didn't think it'd be a big issue. Yep. <laughs> Could you not just, did she just right. smash with her greasy fat palm on the edit keyboard? Oh. Right. Okay, now I no longer stand with Steven Crowder. Right, I mean, he's, oh gotta, make, You're releasing this he's gotta make his jokes, I guess. Wham, he made a joke. You make disparaging jokes about people too, Val. Oh, this is how you're representing <laughs> yourself? <It's> just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fat! <laughs> how do you think uh, Steven Crowder broke his right wrist? Submit your most insulting suggestions into the chat below. The winner... There will win nothing. I don't know if you should be talking about fat privilege or a DJ with f- mouse ears. I'm sorry. This is so obnoxious. And by the way, perceived as thin? What is yeah. what is perceived as thin? Yeah, perception can have a big role in it. Because normally perception is what matters more than your actual fucking BMI. I can give you an example. Guys, do you want to hear something kind of crazy? I, Vosh, am 265 pounds. Right, I mean, I perceived you that way i suppose by you know just this little uh, obs you know webcam shot of your general upper frame here you know i can perceive you as a plus size person um i, I don't need to know your bmi or your weight i can visually i could give you an ocular pat down and i can basically see <laughs> a big guy but i don't know i actually fit the medical definition for obese however you don't say. In spite of that, my chest comes out further than my stomach. And when I'm dressed up to the nines out on the out on the daily, I don't look fat at all. In fact, I actually look kind of big, like 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 muscular. The reason for that is because my like actual amount of fat on my body isn't as important to how I'm treated as how it is I look. And I look fucking yoked. I'm six foot two. Okay, but you know that's that's perception, but that's also I I, could, I don't know, dude. I I personally can tell just by this fucking mugshot of yours that you're a uh, not yoked. <laughs> you're certainly not yoked. Uh, is, is he is he really saying that if he goes out in public, you know, dressed to the nines, as he said, like if he's doing like whatever steampunk cosplay, that's what he looks like. He looks like the kind of guy who would do some sort of like cosplay like that is he, is he saying that he looks all yoked and badass when he's doing that i mean i have my my serious doubts but because i have a barrel chest a large rib cage and broad shoulders i can pull off this admittedly pretty large amount of flab on my body um without being judged as a fat person i don't know dude i think i think that could be pulled off because a lot of gals like the sort of doughy dad bod look or dad dad uncle look which is creepy but (laughs) that's the reality of the situation ain't it and i know this because i know people who weigh the same as me who are the same height as me who look fat as fuck who just look really fucking fat and they get way more shit for it than i do so again right but both of your circumstances are most likely the result of a lack of exercise and you know, the fact that you eat cake three times a day, you know, like that, I, I don't understand. This is, this is so difficult for me. How does this amount to privilege? You know, it, it, it doesn't compute. You remind me as a good friend when I was in the, <laughs> thanks. I've got, got to get the super chats after this video is going to take a while and I know it. Right. He needs super chats, but he's anti-capitalist. Figure that one out. He needs that, you know, corporate platform propping up his uh, his economic advancement. 
but you know he hates corporations and free private commerce i guess this is one thing that people always talk they have- oh, oh and by the way i bet you he has arguments as to why capitalism is at the core of why people are fat and you know i guess to a somewhat i guess you could somewhat make that argument but again it's it, it, it's due to the fact that you just either didn't learn how to cook or if you did you only cook fat fuck shit as though we don't know how to make these judgments. Line up 10 people, okay? Yeah. Make nine of them within the bounds of health. They don't have to be of all course. thin. They can be somewhat chubby. They can be overweight. They can be on the thin side. They can be right dead center. Make one of them really obese. Then take 10 people. In- okay, this is a cool hypothetical. It doesn't really demonstrate the point. Yeah, obviously in super huge disparities between healthy people and morbidly obese people, it's going to be obvious what the difference is. But line me up with nine other people who are 265 pounds at six foot two, and I guarantee you I'll be one of the last people you finger as being uh, uh, overweight or obese. We're not talking, I don't think we've talked about weight or BMI yet. I think it, it, it's just, we're, we're, we're talking about people that you, you give an ocular pat down, you give it, you know, you give a nice uh, visual scan of their situation and you can, you know, basically tell that they're pounding Doritos and Mountain Dew, you know, and, and Lay's chips for every meal, right? And they're not exercising. Because, again, perception plays a part. This isn't a big. This isn't a big point, by the way. He's like triggered as fuck over the fact that the woman said perce- perceived in the video. He's like really fucking angry over this. It wasn't really central to the point. Triggered. Oh yeah. Oh, the right wingers are the real triggered snowflakes. That whole troll the troll meme. No, I think he's just affecting a persona and a character. Except that's what Steven Crowder does. That's what he's paid to do. You know, he's he's got to do this bombastic. You know, Mister Conservative comedian sort of shtick uh it's it's triggering because it's a bunch of fucking lies man if you want to call it triggering if you want to undermine you know uh sticking up for people that have ptsd and are are triggered i mean which is what you your side claims to care about um i mean it, it is it is annoying when people are demanding sort of uh extra special treatment due to um self-afflicted inflicted problems in their life like how do you not find that to be irritating i I don't understand these others like even just being mildly miffed at that i i don't understand why you would call that triggered if if someone is like rightfully pointing out that you're being a crybaby if you you just don't like you're demanding all this extra special treatment when it's something that you did yourself same 10 people can be obese they can be thin i guarantee you every single time they can go well that's the fat one (laughs) (laughs) it's not perception and by the way on public transport this he's so fucking mad keep in mind steven crowder had a comedy show on fox that was we can actually look at that really quickly wait hold on so what i'll never spell anything correctly Okay, so this is just this is just him scanning his YouTube or his uh, Wikipedia page. He began performing stand-up comedy at age 17. Frequent guest as an opinion panelist, first appearing on Fox News. He was also on Arthur, I believe, playing uh, Brain or some shit like that. Uh, where's the uh, Where's the Fox News thingy? Was I misinformed about this? I know that he has a background that attempts at comedy. <laughs> It is kind of true that uh, up until recently, conservative comedians, I mean, that was sort of a, I mean, that concept was laughable in and of itself, you know, the idea that there'd be a funny conservative. But I think that's changing with Gavin and to a certain extent, Steven Crowder, Milo, that sort of thing. Oh, Freedom Tunes, big shout out to uh, Seamus. That, I mean, these guys are getting funny. And yes, the left is quaking in their boots about it. Because the left are becoming increasingly unfunny because they're the ones being censorious and nannying and hectoring. And, oh, we can't say that. That's offensive. In October 2013, Fox News dropped Crowder. This was announced shortly after Crowder made negative statements about Sean Hannity and about Fox News. Not reactionary enough for him, perhaps? Reactionary? I mean, what do you mean by that? Do you, do you mean that he wants to bring us back to the Dark Ages or some straw man like that because he's talking about how 
fat people who are not suffering from like a you know a condition like fat people that just want to eat donuts for every meal that they don't deserve like all this extra special treatment and all this extra special empathy like that's reactionary that's medieval to you come on man he does he does sort of rep himself god he looks sad in this picture he does rep him so sad who hurt you like i i can already sense the the you know the typical you want to talk faux concern trolling that's what the left does man when they pull the who hurt you steven i mean come on man you guys are you guys are the ones doing the faux concern trolling himself as a comedian man that lighting in his studio sure is favorable huh um he does rep himself as a comedian the right is getting better at comedy right dude <laughs> you know and it. leftists are getting nervous yep this is the problem with this, and we'll get back, is, is, is this ends up marginalizing people who actually are marginalized. Yeah. When you talk about public transport... Wait, do you care about people who are marginalized, Stephen Crowder? I have never in my life heard you stand up for a marginalized community. Do you suddenly care about them now that you're using them as a, a tool to shit on fat people? I, I don't know, man. Who, who like? It's difficult for me, personally, to classify many people in a Western first world country as quote marginalized. And this is like a buzzword that has only been popularized in the past, like four to seven years. Um, it's, it's a way for leftists to get votes. Like, I mean, come on, like, Oh, we stand up for the marginalized. No, no, you don't. As soon as they, as soon as they uh, disagree with you on any sort of like little pedantic, little semantic thing, you fucking drop them at the, you, you, you kick them to the curb at the drop of a hat. There, there is no sticking up for the marginalized, especially, in, again, in a first world country. The extent that anyone is marginalized, you, you drop them. You drop them as soon as they disagree with you. This is because... That's bullshit virtue signal. Because um, it literally requires a fundamental changing of your physical interaction with the material world. <laughs> it's not because I hate fat people. Oh, he's still really triggered about the perception thing. No. If I'm on a plane, if I'm on a train, and I sit in a chair, and someone sits uh, sits in the seat next to me, right? It's okay, I have a seat, you have a seat. If this person requires two seats, I need to give them two seats! Yeah, exactly. no, that's, that's not privilege at all. You don't like sitting next to me? What is he talking about? This wasn't addressed in the video at all. What the fuck? Wait, what the fuck is he talking about? He's talking about the extra accommodations that have to be made for people that choose to inhale a dump truck full of fucking Mexican food every day. And how when people maybe <laughs> emit a sigh of exasperation because of that, that's not like thin privilege or fat oppression, dude. It's, it's because fat fucks are demanding extra special treatment and it's kind of fucking annoying quite frankly like it's holding the rest of us back obviously like very literally and figuratively or spiritually if that's what you're into again he's really triggered about this perception thing the woman said one word about like being perceived as fat and now he's on a desperate mission to prove that there is in fact empirical there are empirical consequences to being larger than not, not being what? Like, like, okay, okay Stephen Crowder, Crow like, we get it. Yes. But, okay, okay, cool. cool. We, we, we know. know. No, no one was arguing, arguing against this point, point to begin with. Yeah. Well, what they're saying is that it's, that it's, like, society doing it to them somehow. Well, no, it's, they did it. They did it. I, 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 I is is this just like you in denial? Like, are you lying to yourself and lying to your audience? I don't, you're not dumb. You're a really actually funny, witty guy. You're a funny, witty, fat guy. You know, I, I find you to be entertaining, though I disagree with you on everything. It's, you know, it's, you're, you're not a dumbass. I, I, what am I left with here? I'm not fat. I'm just a bigger person. So if you take up part of their chair, you got to got to deal with it. Are these the same people, by the way, who have a problem with man spreading? Pretty much. Yeah. I think this is the yep. same. Crew. You. Yep. Yep. So like, yeah, on one hand, they're accusing men of being entitled for having balls and maybe spreading their legs a little bit and maybe having, you know, some spatial awareness issues. But then at the same time, they bitch when someone lets out a sigh of exasperation when they have to share like half a seat with a fucking fat person. 
I mean, talk about entitlement. It, it's all projection with these leftists. It's just, you know, they expect you to tolerate their bullshit, but they're not going to tolerate yours. You want to tell me... Just run, run through all the talking points, buddy. Do it. All the talking points. That that is not worse than... What do you mean? Okay, so you, you didn't respond to it. Well, let's see if he responds to it. He accuses Steven Crowder of not responding to anything. Man, There's a lot of responding going on here. Responding to a response to a response. Spreading... Uh, and it was just so much the way you perceive us, the way you treat us. Listen, if someone has to walk around you yeah. because of the orbit, that doesn't mean that they hate fat people. It means they have to walk around you. No, this has not, he's not addressing the video at all. He's just rambling. He's just rambling. And he got the man spreading thing in there too, because that got because that got a lot of people real fucking angry. The man spreading thing. One per one feminist inadvertently tweeted like man spreading at some point, and the entire fucking reactionary community lost their goddamn minds. Oh, please, no, they tried, no, the, the, the feminist blogosphere, I think this might have been back in, like, Gamergate era, or what have you, but no, the, the feminist blogosphere definitely tried to make that a thing, and they surreptitiously took photos of men who were spreading their legs on public transit, even if they weren't sitting next to people, to shame them on Tumblr and Twitter and Facebook, you're, you're I mean, you're downplaying it, I guess in the relative scheme of things, it is downplayable, but so is this fat acceptance crap. I mean, so it's like, you know, eventually we're going to crash into the fucking sun. So who gives a fuck? Because there is physical space they have to navigate that wouldn't, it wouldn't be the case <laughs> with someone who was in, within the bounds of, you know, the BMI range of not near immediate de death. All right, let's move on to our next point here. You didn't address the- what the fuck? He literally just watched that section of it and spent two and a half minutes really fucking triggered about her saying perceived. And that was it. Alright. You didn't address anything either. You just poo-pooed the manspreading comparison and called him triggered, which... I mean, he's playing a character, he's playing up a persona, and it's annoying, <laughs> quite frankly, like... What do you want? You know what? Louder with Crowder's had a bad day, okay? Who hurt you, Steven? Mate, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't tell police him so hard. I bet, I bet when he, now that he's done with his little spurt, his little, little fucking eh, angry boy spurt, he's gonna start bringing some cogent arguments to the table. Shut Yeah, well, that goes for you too, boy. Vosh used to manspread on the metro? You would know, ICF. And it's true. And you know what? I manspread to this day. I've got a fuck. I've got a huge, just a big fucking dick. Every time I get on public metro, I don't just fucking manspread. I. A big fucking dick that you've never seen in your life. I fucking practice gymnastics. I, as far as I can go, which isn't very far, but I did used to do yoga, I lunge my feet out. I hang them out there in the air, and when people come close to me, I kick them! I kick them! Is this his cartoonish caricature of, like, male entitlement on the subway that he thinks exists? Because testicles exist? I think leftists have a problem with acknowledging, like, objective reality. Like, they have a problem acknowledging that testicles exist and they have a problem acknowledging that fat exists that like this is this is matter that has to be dealt with in reality like in physical meat space <laughs> like this isn't just some like shadowy construct that you know the the evil patriarchs created this this is real shit i don't i kick him as hard as i can Oh, yeah. This is so stressful. Yeah, that guy was fucking crazy. That's what I do. That's how I manspread. You have a problem with it? Get in my fucking Twitter mentions. My feet are not sinking. <laughs> what is it you're saying? I can't hear. Right. Well, one thing that I think everybody can come to a consensus on is that the audio levels on that video are perpetuating the lazy spirit. You can't be bothering to do Amazon. <laughs>
<laughs> you can literally <laughs> shop for <laughs> anything at home right now. Yeah. It's a fat person's world. <laughs> All right, you know. Is it? Is this world now for fat people? I didn't know that. All right, cool, I guess. Um, by the way, way to not engage with the argument, Crowder. She was like, correctly, hey, then people can like go out and try on clothes and like their sizes are accessible at pretty much all retail outlets. But if you're fat, especially if you're a woman, mind you, it's way harder to do that and we have less options when it comes to trying stuff on before buying it. Right, and that, again, that is a consequence of physical reality um and there are fat plus you know plus size stores I, I believe i mean i'm i don't know what the fuck the name of it is what what is the the fat person uh version of hot topic was it torrid or is that is that like a 2006 version uh yeah i don't know yeah i, I guess i have thin privilege i wouldn't know about that which is a fact you can argue points against the assertion she's making tangential to that fact, but what she's saying is a fact. We don't stock XXXXLs at the Lotto with Crowder Shop. LottoWithCrowderShop.com. You know why? Because we don't sell enough of them. Exactly. Okay, we have, you know this with wine. You have to purchase yeah. wholesale. And, and he's talking about XXXXLs when the woman in the video is clearly just, like, fat. Like, we're not talking about, like, morbid... We're not talking about the people who have those grotesque, like, medical shows. Like, the I was 800 pounds, and they had to, like, flip me with a spatula on the bed, and they had to forklift me out of the bedroom to get me to the hospital. We're not talking about those people. We're just talking about fat people. Okay? I'm fat. Now, thankfully... Who, I mean, both of those categories, again, exist because they effectively choose to... So it's just you demanding that everybody acquiesce to your shitty decisions, which is a common theme on the left. I mean, look at abortion. They want everybody to fund their fucking abortion on demand at any time for any reason up to and including like childbirth, basically. And if you disagree with subsidizing that, you're, oh, you're controlling my body. Well, it's like, no, I mean, like maybe you should have to face the consequences of your actions. And I think this fat thing is, is no different. Right? People are going to fucking, they're going to sigh awkwardly when they have to sit next to you. Big fucking whoop. And you might have to shop a little bit more carefully to buy clothes until you can fucking put down the donuts. Because I'm large, in addition to being fat, it doesn't really affect me that much socially. I get laid like gangbusters. And because I am a man, my sizes are really fucking simple. And basically all stores stock XLs, which is what I wear. I wear XL t-shirts. And sometimes L's. L's work sometimes, but they're pretty tight on me. Um, whereas if you're a fat woman, not only are the size ranges in women's fucking incomprehensible, they all... So don't Wait, extend what? that far into, like, the fat zone. Wait, so women can't wear XL t-shirts? Like, I mean, I, I'm aware of, like, hipster people who, they wear band t-shirts, and that's all they wear. I mean, I, I kind of used to be a, a runner in that crowd. I used to hang out and that sort of thing. It's just, like, their favorite trendy band t-shirt is all they wear. And if they get an... How, how is it that... I mean, I thought that... I thought you guys were gender neutral, sort of pro gender neutral. So, like, what a woman can't wear a triple XL t shirt like you do. Okay. Not to mention, you've got like the titty size. You know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's a lot, uh, there's stuff. There's stuff that goes into it. sell retail. It doesn't make sense to purchase something that would not be profitable. This is the same reason that a general sporting goods store might not stock a, a, a ton of clothing or attire. Yeah, you're giving arguments as to why thin privilege exists. The profit motive keeps clothing corporations from producing a wide range of clothing options open to fat people. You're making the argument right now, Stephen Crowder. You're proving her point. You're making the argument as to why thin privilege exists. No, because you put yourself in that position. It's not an immutable characteristic for you to be fat. It's not the same thing as big, big, big swang and privilege or tall privilege. Those are immutable characteristics. What, do you, what The way he's defining this runs completely afoul of the very definition of the term privilege. Like, is, I understand it. I thought the term privilege meant that it's a benefit or a right bestowed upon you due to immutable characteristics that you didn't control. Now, that is completely different from, I work out every day, I have a disciplined diet, you know, I drink a ton of water, 
and as a result, I'm fit or thin. That's something that you earned. That is not, I mean, that's, that's not a privilege. That's some, that's, that's a gold star that you earned because you busted your ass and you showed some self-discipline. I feel like I'm repeating myself here. What's wrong with now, you're saying that thin privilege is justified by the profit motive, but you're still saying it exists. No, he's not. He's saying that it's a meritocracy and that it's fine. He's saying that meritocracy is fine, basically. That would be necessary for amputees. It doesn't mean they hate amputees. It means they're not a shop that sells to a very specific niche portion of the market. That yeah, there's also able body privilege. People with... No, 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 and see, now that's a bad comparison on Crowder's part. Amputees, you know, well, you know, might have gotten an injury, an accident, some sort of thing. Uh, that that you could argue, I guess, would be a privilege. Uh, I guess. I mean, it's it, but it's still not the same as fat because you choose to enter the fat zone, as this person on the screen is saying. Who are who are amputees also lack that pro? Like, yeah, these privileges exist. You're making the fucking point. That being said, I have far more sympathy for people who've lost their limbs in war than people who simply let too many ring dings get in. Sure. <laughs> oh, look, it's the same thing. Again, they gotta slide it in like, haha, fat people are gross and we hate them, even though it's not at all relevant to the point. Nothing that he said, by the way, right now is relevant. He's actually bolstering her arguments. The shoe size is right. Well, I mean, fat people are often gross. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, dude. Have you ever gone out to eat and you see some fat fucks chowing down and like, 80 wings and like a bunch of large ass pizzas. I mean, it's, 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 it's sight to behold, N not a pleasant one. Uh, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's like a trough. Right. Every time I go into a store, not eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, those sizes are plentiful. You can get anything that you want. I have to go to the very end of the aisle and there's like eight things to choose from for my shoe size. Right. Right. That's the same thing. So what do I have? Shoe, like you have, you have privilege. If you have a size 12 men's shoe. Yeah. That um, yeah. To an extent. There is a certain privilege in having a body shape, including foot size, which fits in with the clothes that are, or shoes that are typically produced. Now, generally speaking, that's not a very severe privilege. Medium-sized foot privilege doesn't really, like, that's not really a big one. Yeah, yeah but I mean, SJWs will complain about, like, allergy privilege, like, oh, this venue had... I mean, I, I literally heard, like, an SJW complain about a venue having... Uh, a peanut night, you know how like certain bars have peanuts that you, you know, you, nuts in your mouth, shells on the floor sort of thing. Um, they're complaining about it because they have an allergy and the venue was not accommodating this person's allergy needs. And it's, it's, I mean, it's sort of like you're complaining about something really minute and it's an accommodation that you really shouldn't expect. Um, but again, these are, Immutable characteristics. These are things that the people can't really help. So it could be argued that they have some degree of a lack of privilege. But it's it's not really a good comparison to the fat thing. I'm not I'm just not seeing it. You know, having the the disadvantage of having big feet doesn't tend to fuck people's lives up the same way that say being trans or being black can. And then, you know, one might argue I I would argue that being fat can, in many ways, disadvantage your life far more severely than having big feet. I love, I love this. Like, so he peppers in the black oppression thing, like, you know, putting it in the same category as being morbidly obese or like disabled. These these leftists literally believe, on some level, that being black or a minority is akin to having a disability. Like, how fucking patronizing can you fucking get, dude? But yes. Unreal. That's the same thing. That I have size 14 feet, by the way, for any foot fetishists out there who are watching this right now. You're saying? Damn, dude. Anyone wanking it to this dude's stompers. Jeez. Here, of course they're gonna have stuff that most people can fit in. Go to a store. There's plenty of them that have bigger clothes. Okay, but does the same apply to Dabba and Nerve socks? I don't know. I would assume you can. It's, those it's are be. readily available yeah. in land whale sizes. By the way. Land whale sizes. Hit the notification bell if you... By the way, if you liked that land whale joke from 2011, be sure to hit the notification bell so you, along with the other 3.4 million dupes who follow this channel, can be notified whenever I push out any of these comedy hits. <laughs> I don't know the 2011 thing. It's funny, because 2011 is right around when everybody started to virtue signal and act as if they cared about 
privileged this and oppression that. And it was largely Facebook and social media that was pushing this. Um, so you want to talk 2011, you know, uh, we could talk 2011, 2012, 2013, somewhere in that window. That was when y'all started to, you know, feign interest in all this oppression and privilege crap um, in order to get votes for your parties. Uh, but I don't know, I, I, Steven Crowder, you know, he's got a, he's got an audience for a reason. Like I, it's probably mostly because of the change my mind and the Crowder confronts. Like those are the segments that really hooked me. Like th those are the things I enjoy by Crowder the most. Um, cause they're pretty bombastic and entertaining. I don't know. I don't know what to say. You uh, haven't already on YouTube. Actually, no, subscribe not only to the channel, but bookmark the page because on SoundCloud. Yeah, sure. And just go to the SoundCloud. And, yeah, sure. Fucking. We're not necessarily showing up in your feed. Subscribe on iTunes so you can uh, hear the audio version. Of course, uh, a lot of Twitter.com slash smoke if you want to continue the show. All right, let's... What did you just say? Subscribe on iTunes so you can uh, hear the audio version. Of course, uh, a lot of Twitter.com slash smoke if you want to continue the show. All right. He's going to slow this down and be extra pedantic or whatever, semantic, psycho. He said subscribe on iTunes if you want to hear the rest of the audio portion of the show, loudearthcrowder.com. What did you just say? Feed, subscribe on iTunes so you can mm -hmm. uh, hear the audio version. Of course, uh, loudearthcrowder.com. That's my If you want to continue the show, all right. This. I don't, I'm, I don't know. That, that's not funny, dude. How did that not help? I mean, Crowder's obviously like a highly caffeinated sort of ADD sort of guy. And he's got the fast talk syndrome. But, you know, he was telling people to look him up on iTunes and SoundCloud and you want to hear the audio portion of the show? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Okay. No. I mean, okay. Yeah, you do. All right. Clean up audio. Uh, clean up and edit audio after the fact. But uh. this clip, it has to do with actual eating. Grabbing something to eat. Just think. You pop into a bakery, pick up a donut, oh. and sit there, and then. Oh, look at that decadent shit right there, dude. It's a box. <laughs> oh my god. That is a, I mean, that's multiple meals in itself. And she knows this. She's an adult. It's like, it, feminism and leftism, whatever you want to call it, seems to be centered around, let me make any decision that I want and don't criticize me for it. And don't, like, even have an opinion on it. Like, I really can't hear. You're confident, but you're whining about the comments and stares? Or are you stoked about it? Like, is that the type of attention that you seek? Is what you're saying over the audio mixing. It's just really uncomfortable. You just can't enjoy the Your words are also desynced. Yeah, some more comments are coming. I haven't had a donut that size in years. And here's something, again. Yeah. Right, I think actually Crowder has um, some sort of, I don't know the name of it, he has some sort of condition where if he doesn't, like, meticulously watch his diet and workout routine, he will be a fat fuck. That's probably, you know what? Back to Vouch's little, oh, you're trigger, trigger, do a right wing trigger snowflake. You know, this issue probably hits close to home to the dude because he's got some sort of uh, fat condition. Like, you can sort of see it in his face. Like, yeah, okay. You, you can tell that he, he's on the verge of blowing up and being a fat dude if he doesn't uh, watch what he does, which, you know, the fat, the fat acceptance crowd could take a note out of Crowder's book, you know, be a little bit more self-disciplined. Like, I ate donuts in the fucking rig, buddy. I think I just tossed out another six-pack earlier today. Are you shaming me? You fucking shaming me for my donut lust? You okay? Donut lust. <laughs> that should be the name of a, a band or a, a song or perhaps even an album cover that, you know, exclusively fat posy, posy people. Maybe it could be like a fat posy parody band, Donut Lust. Okay, over there. You're losing it. I don't know. You okay? Do I need to end the stream so you can stop laughing? I killed, I killed my GF with my hair. See, Steven Crowder, that's how you get it. When Steven Crowder makes a joke, the ring of of support staff and guests that he has with him all nervously laugh because he they know he can fire him. When I make a joke, my girlfriend shits herself and dies. Okay.
Yeah, I mean, I, I will concede, like, some of, yeah, he, he does have that little yes-man crew on his, on his set to sort of, like, you know, <laughs> force a laugh at some of his jokes, which don't always land. And, you know, I, I will concede, Vaush is a pretty funny guy. Like, I, 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 will, I will concede that he's pretty amusing to watch. Okay. Despite me, again, disagreeing with almost everything he says. Hey, that's true comedy. <laughs> The reason why this criticism is not designed to be mean-spirited is you are demanding validation. It's yes. very different. No one here would want to be like, you fat, you fat little jerk. I want to, be, I want to beat you up. No, no one wants to. Wait, what? To do that. But if Wait, she's demanding, demanding validation, validation by asking people not be weird about her eating food? You're going to demand eating food if you want to call it that, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Like a deep-fried pastry with fucking Reese's peanut butter cups on it. I mean... That's only uh, ostensibly food. Uh, come on, man. That's like pure sugar and fat. Let the world find you beautiful and demanding that we turn a blind eye to all modern medical science. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. He, she's, got, she's, literally, she's literally just like, hey, if people could stop like giving me shit when I eat junk food, that'd be great. And he's like, you want us to ignore all medical science. What the fuck does this have to do with anything? Crowder, keep, Crowder, keep it in your pants, okay? Buddy, please, calm it down, okay? Uh, listen, <laughs> criticism is entirely valid. The yeah. lack of self-awareness here to me is unbelievable. She's wait, you can just, wait, this, you, you should just be able to criticize people for eating? This is, ex again, again, Stephen Crowder, big, Yes, I mean, anything or anyone that exists in reality is up for criticism. And again, it's not just for eating. It's like, I think as Gavin McGinnis once hilariously put it, you're dying! You're not just eating food. You're slowly killing yourself. You wouldn't say, again, you wouldn't say that to a fucking heroin junkie. Oh, they're just, they're just partying, bro. Oh, you're going to criticize them for partying, brah? Well, I mean, they're partying, I guess, ostensibly, but they're also fucking injecting toxic drugs into their veins, and they're slowly, if not quickly, killing themselves. <sighs> Brain Steven Crowder, perfectly illustrating the point. He believes that you should be able, that's, oh, it's totally okay, to just criticize fat people for eating. Criticize fat people for eating? Eating what, dude? Like eating a mountain of chocolate and you know no nothing of nutritional value and slowly killing yourself and demanding that everybody validate you and like give you special fucking privileges and treatment and fawn over you and like reward you. I... Like you're make you're making her point for you, buddy. I mean, you're making her point for her, buddy. No. You're basically indicating that people just kind of treat fat people like shit. They treat themselves like shit, dude. They treat themselves like shit. And you, you, I mean, you sort of get what you put in as far as that's concerned, don't you? I, I don't, I don't, I... And that's thin privilege. She's eating a... No, it's not. It's thin and fitness merit. It's, it's, you earned it. For like the seventeenth time, holy fuck! Donut the size of a pizza pie. It looks like a. It's really not that big of a donut. Can we wait? One, two, three, four. Yes, five, it six. is. It's the Leaning Tower of Pastry, Seven, dude. Eight, oh, he's going eight, back in the timeline. I think that's a normal donut size, guys. <laughs> I, that's a normal oh, donut size. No, it's not, dude. It's the size of my ass cheek. Are you? And, and it's going to increase the size of one's ass cheek by another ass cheek after eating it. And this girl looks small, too. Just like proportions, head size, shoulder width. This girl looks like at most, like, 5'5". Five, five. This is a normal donut size. Okay. I think British fat people are going to be, you know, less fat than your American fat person. Which... You know, it's it's funny how in first world westernized cultures where everybody's supposedly super marginalized, we have so much to fucking eat. Like we have to <laughs> we have to, you know, come up with strategies to avoid food in order to not be fat and overfed. I mean, obviously, she's not engaging in any of those strategies, but the rest of us try to to a certain extent. OK.
This here to me is unbelievable. She's she's eating a donut the size of a pizza pie. It looks like a National Geographic special when yeah, a lion gets a hold of a gazelle. Exactly. Oh, I could have just waited for a second. A National Geographic special where a lion gets a hold of a gazelle. For just a person taking a big bite of a donut. Again, Stephen Crowder, you're kind of making her point for you. You're kind of just like insulting her and treating her like shit because she's fat and is she's doing like completely normal things like eating a donut. Well, she's just fat. I mean, she just she just you know materialized on this earth as a fat person. She just she just appeared out of the ether and was fat, and it was good. <laughs> like, no, there was a a long series of decisions made that resulted in that, and, and she's trying to act like she's owning it, and and I guess so are you to an extent, but no, you're. No, no, you're demanding validation for something that's not an accomplishment. You're making the point for her. That it, she's <laughs> literally eating a donut that has Reese's Pieces cups on it. it that's a normal. Have you these guys? Uh, do you think these guys like? Is this do do reactionaries enjoy good food? I've actually wondered this before. Do you think reactionaries like go out and eat good cultured food, or do you think they're like cultured food? This motherfucker thinks a fucking, like, Butterfinger donut is cultured food. Get out of here, you hipster fuck. Terrified of enjoying a kebab, so they just stay indoors and, like, reheat, um, like, fucking Hot Pockets. I I'm genuinely curious, because the suggestion that eating a donut is, like, obscene because it has Reese's peanut butter cups onto it? Like, I I'm sorry, have you never been to Blue's Donuts or Voodoo Donuts in Portland? Yeah, but dude, that's some decadent shit that you're only supposed to, like, indulge in on special occasions. Like, after you've gotten your your, your workout regimen in, or whatever. Or, you, <laughs> like, your cheat day. Like, your one cheat day a month. Like, I, I'm, I'm assuming that these guys probably, you know, that that's what these guys adhere to. Like, you have a cheat day a month, or, like, every couple weeks... And then you have a voodoo donut with some bacon and sprinkles on it. Uh, have you never been to California Donuts in Los Angeles? Nice donut shops have, like, really cool fucking donuts. I'm sorry you're missing out on the good shit, my friend. I don't think they are. I think they know goddamn well what a donut like that is. And they probably only have it seldom, seldomly. And, and, and as a result, they're not fat fucks. Like, as you can see. I know. Is that what, what it is? Can we bring yes. that up? Well, is that? It looks like it. How does it something like? Well, look, this is the thing that maybe Stephen Crowder is wealthy, and he's never had a donut like this. Those donuts are really fucking good. Trust me, if you're going out and you're heading to a little donut shop that's got a line outside of it and all the donuts are like $2.50 and they've got like a tray lined up and they've got a bunch of different gourmet donuts with a bunch of different weird toppings and fillings, you know you're about to have some good ass shit, okay? Right, like, those donuts are pretty damn good, um, but again, I think Crowder has some sort of, I don't want to speak too specifically to it, but I think he has some kind of health condition where if he indulges in that the way you do, uh, he will look like you, and since he's on TV, and he probably has, he's like a high-profile media personality, like, he can't really afford to do that, you know? He's got to have some self-discipline about it. You know what this feels like to me? I know I keep interrupting. Uh, you know what this feels like to me? This would be like them making fun of anal sex. This would be like, oh, they, they fuck in the ass? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a pussy right there. For some people. Oh, all right. Weird. People shit from there. This just feels like a very juvenile revulsion um, that I don't understand. But, Okay. I'm sorry you've never had anal, Steven Crowder. It feels pretty good. Weird tangent. Is he, is he comparing, like, jelly donuts to anal sex? I mean, I don't know. I, I personally prefer vag sex. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't, I don't get this guy's comparisons. Milk the, milk the fucking nut out with that ring. Bring it up again. Gross. Like, anyone who wants to think about dudes that visually look like this getting milked or milking. Ooh, nope. That, 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 that. I was born this oh, way. No. I was born. No, listen. If you're going to try and make the case that this is genetic and it's not through choice, she she never mentioned. Wow, with a big brain comprehension. 
she never said it's genetic or not by choice? She has never made that argument. It hasn't come up in the video. Nothing even remotely tangential to that argument has come up in this video. Right, but Vouch, that is the criteria by which it would be a privilege or uh, oppression is in the, you know, statistically, like the, the statistical anomaly that is, you know, someone having a genetic predisposition to just being fat, like, and then someone's being utterly shitty to you because you're fat and you have a genetic predisposition to being fat, like, that could be uh, characterized as a privilege or lack of a privilege. But if you're fat because you choose to eat fucking chocolate donuts, that's a different story, isn't it? So he's completely removing context. He's completely straw manning or, or like, you know, not, I guess, failing to understand what's being said. Like, and I, I think he's, he himself, the, despite the fact that he's using the term privilege every five fucking seconds, he doesn't seem to even know what the term means. This is why I say that reactionaries are the real NPCs. They see something they don't like, and then they think of every like little bit argument they've ever heard against it, and then their critique is just going to be them reciting that. They don't engage the actual argument. I don't think they even hear anything. So far, there are three times now, Steven Crowder has heard her say shit, and then just gone off. Just nothing related to what she's saying. No, dude. He, he, he brought up the genetic thing because... Again, that that would be an immutable sort of something that you can't help. And then we could have some sort of like degree of extra empathy or compassion for you. What what is difficult about this to understand? Like, does he not know what the word privilege means? I, I <laughs> if you're gonna use the term privilege, and if the term privilege is gonna be like the centerpiece of your analysis of things, you should probably know what the word fucking means. Right? Can he even, like, hear her? Oh my god, Steven Crowder. Do you think Steven Crowder has the audio running through those headphones that he's wearing? What if the audio is playing out loud, and he has noise-canceling earphones, and he doesn't even hear the audio, and then he just starts yelling? Dumb. What? Do not pick! <laughs> I'm still perplexed why people who weren't born with a prostate like anal, good for them, I guess, I just don't get it. James Selman. James Selman. Live a little. The page <laughs> tree, the <laughs> confection, covered in Skittles! Yeah. Sorry, let's move on to the next. Wait. The page <laughs> tree, <laughs> the <laughs> confection, covered in Skittles! Why would you, why would you post, why would you show the picture of her very clearly not eating something covered in Skittles? Right after he said it was covered in Skittles. Oh, because that's a really important point. Like, oh, Scrooge doesn't respond to any of the points. Meanwhile, you're... Focusing on the specific candy that's on or not on the donuts. Get the fuck out of here, Bosch. Come on, man. That just kind of makes him look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah. You sure wrecked Sorry, him. The next clip. That triggered right-wing snowflake who might have a personal connection to this issue because of whatever health issues he has. That's where she talks about uh, the privilege, thin privilege uh, in going... going. <laughs> Again, seven minutes in, not a single response to a single point made in the video. Yeah, Vosh, what's the deal with that? And in many points, his inability to cogently argue against the arguments made in the video have actually steel-manned the woman's positions, arguing that fat people do get shit off for basically no reason. It's not no reason. It's because we visually see that you have a lack of self-discipline and are just visually unappealing as a result of that. And it's... And you're demanding, again, you're demanding a sob fest. You know, you're, you're demanding a sympathy sob fest on your behalf. And that's not going to fucking happen. <laughs> and going to the doctor. Going to the doctors. Are you able to go and be seen and diagnose what is actually wrong with you? Or is the appointment turned into a weigh-in session and how you can improve your diet and lose weight? Oh, cool, oh, blimey! The audio here is so bad, I think I'm going to add a little bit to it and do my best Cockney accent, which is really quite bad, to overlay the audio. All right, there we go. Right, the audio. You can't diagnose health problems by looking at people. My audio is probably coming in horrible too. So yeah, donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Daniel Dursk or paypal.me slash Dursk I believe it is. You know, do that. And then maybe I can afford a better microphone. People, actually, yes. Yes, you can. 
Ooh, Steven Crowder perpetuating a little anti-science there. That you can just diagnose health problems by looking at people? Yes, you can. You can't do that, actually. I think you can diagnose that you are, in fact, unhealthy by weight, BMI, and visually scanning someone. I think that, generally speaking, you can. I don't, I don't know if he's specifically saying that you can specifically diagnose a specific condition just by looking at someone. I don't think that's what he's saying. You shouldn't do that. Doctors should actually, like, examine you before they diagnose medical problems. Um, uh, uh, um, weight bias in, in medicine is actually a very well-studied phenomenon. There are a lot of doctors out there who, and this is true, and actually, believe it or not, I have actually read articles on this. I'm engaged with the literature. There is actually a problem, and this is a problem, not just like a, ooh, PC liberal diversity problem, but a medical problem where doctors will sometimes see a fat person and then the fat person will be like, hey, I've got this really weird pain in my left side and I don't know, it feels like I pulled a muscle, but I don't, and the doctor will be like, <laughs> lose some weight, just fucking lose some weight, idiot. And then they'll like shoo them out. And then it turns out that there's like an actual fucking medical issue or some like bone hurting juice that got consumed. This is actually, this is actually like a real thing. Uh, okay, well, you know, that's valid, I guess, if, if what you're saying is correct, but, uh, whatever. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to look into the, the study and if what he's saying is true, then that might be an example of uh, thin privilege, I guess. But it, it seems like very, uh, very anecdotal. Again, it's probably something he read on the guardian or Vox or something. Um, uh, it's a problem in the medical community. There are like doctors and researchers who have been like, hey, we got to stop this. It actually harms our ability to diagnose people accurately and give them proper medical care. Okay, maybe, maybe I should look into that one. That that might be a point, but we'll, we'll have to see. Not always. No. First thing you walk into a doctor, you say, oh, I have something wrong. They go, oh, well, let me take a look at you. Yeah. Let me take a look at it. Let me see what's going on. Broken arm, third degree burns, ob obesity would fall into that category. Yeah. All easily diagnosable by the eyeball test. Yeah, the doctor can tell you're fat, if you're fat, but people don't typically go into offices and just be, and because the only thing wrong with them is that they're fat. Usually they go into doctor's offices because there's an actual medical issue, and then the doctor will say, oh, lol, you're just fat. If your doctor is straight up saying, lol, you're just fat, then obviously you need to get a different doctor. Okay, well, you know, I... I... No one is saying you can't tell if a person's fat by looking at them. If if what if what Vouch is saying is correct, then you know just get rid of that doctor, or maybe explain to them like, hey, yeah, I'm fat, but this might actually be a separate issue. And if your doctor is still saying, "Lol, you're fat, get the fuck out of my office," I, I don't know, man. Like we'll, we'll, we'd have to see about that. If anyone in the comment section can uh, dig up what he's talking about, he didn't notice how Vouch didn't cite anything. Maybe maybe he will. We'll see. But and something else to me. Is it just me, or every single time that everyone goes here to the doctor, are you weighed? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This, this, this part of the deal. This, this isn't a persecution complex. If I walk <laughs> in and I've gained eight pounds over Christmas, my doctor... First of all, this is not necessarily true. If you go into the emergency room, an intensive, clear, uh, um, an intensive care clinic, or any kind of walk-in clinic, they usually don't weigh you. Because normally, when they weigh you and take your height, this is part of a long-term uh, biometrics test that they use to see, like, is, are the kids growing taller? Are you losing or gaining weight? Uh, but if you're just going in there for a medical diagnosis, they don't normally do that. Also, even if they do do that, measuring your weight has nothing to do with whether or not the doctor is able to give an accurate diagnosis. Like, oh, putting on that holiday weight, huh? Because he's a dick, but he's also accurate. And I appreciate it. This is a perfect example. You want... Stephen Crowder... I think, you know, I think I could, I could tell that a personality like Crowder would probably appreciate that sort of abrasive, like, bro uh, you know, joshing sort of camaraderie with, with other dudes, I guess. I guess this is toxic masculinity or some shit like that, but whatever, dude. Crowder, which, is this traumatizing? Do you appreciate it if you were fat and you felt like you had, like, a serious internal issue, um, and you went to the doctor and they were just like, hey, I'm putting on that holiday weight, huh? Lose some weight, fatty. Gave your gut a slap and then sent you out the door, and then you died the next week because your fucking cancer wasn't diagnosed or some shit? 
Dude, okay. Well, again, I'm going to need a citation, you know, citation needed to bring out, like, the 2015 memes, okay? A bit of an extreme example, admittedly, but... Yeah, dude. Again, this is well studied. This happens. Want to eat donuts covered in Reese's peanut butter cups, Skittles, whatever it is, don't call me... There were no cups. Skittles. Call me out. Dude, only a fat fuck would be that, like, <laughs> specific. Oh, it, it wasn't this confection, it was that one. Completely irrelevant. See, again... Speaking of not actually responding to the arguments and this and say you need to be fact checked, there are Reese's pieces which don't actually have chocolate, it's just peanut butter and a delicious candy. There were no Reese's pieces. It, it was, was just the, the fucking peanut butter cups. cups. I think there may have been. No, there, there were, were no Reese's, Reese's pieces. pieces. Those are colored as well. I know it was on there. <laughs> the point is, it was absurd. It was a novelty item that she includes as a diet staple. He really can't. Okay, so first off, he right. Good point. Really can't fathom the idea that people eat like nice donuts. It's stable? That's bad, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. I mean, I guess I can. This is America, where we think we're oppressed when we have, like, donuts three times a day. Like, decadent... Oh, my goodness. This is really weird. Again, like... Again, it's, it's like anal. He... <laughs> this is actually really fucking weird. Like, he actually can't get over it. This dude looks at a butthole and sees donuts. Like that like that's how large and in charge this dude is. And um he accuses this of being uh, her of having this as a diet staple. Um obviously nowhere did she say that, but Steven Crowder has never let a little thing like facts get in the way of his fucking rambling. Yeah. Okay. And this person I, again, you can do an ocular pat down and you can make fairly accurate assumptions about one's habits. I keep using the, the Mac. <laughs> it's always sunny, ocular pat down. I, but no, you, you can somewhat make a, you know, a, a, a basic sort of uh, guess as to what kind of habits this person engages in. He's upset that the primary physician is remaining consistent with the mandatory Hippocratic Oath in that. No. Where in the Hippocratic Oath does it say... Come and look at your patient. If they are fat, don't die, don't actually investigate their health. Just tell them they're fat. What? That's <laughs> not what's being said, dude. It's if you come in and you weigh in at like 350 pounds and you're five foot something, five foot six or whatever. Yeah, man. Come on. How could you? Uh, not not that this chick on in the in the poorly audio mixed uh, special is that, but you know if if if. You're like Vouch or even this chick. Yeah, dude. Like, upon weigh-in, they're going to know that there's some health issues going on. Some dietary and some some maybe some sedentary lifestyle choices. Lack of water drinking. Maybe you drink too much soda. That sort of thing. You know, maybe, maybe cut out uh, uh, cream and sugar in your coffee. Don't eat cereal and bread and cheese. Like, it, it, don't eat donuts. Instead. It's that simple, bro. Instead of prescribing you pills for your lazy, gluttonous lifestyle. Literally nobody said anything about prescribing pills for your lazy, gluttonous life. Literally no one said this. Uh, it's weird. Are, do we watch the same videos as Steven Crowder? Do you think, like, we watch the video of the Brit Bonger talking and he's playing, like, Angry Birds on that iPad in front of him? He's, like, dragging <laughs> slingshot. You know? Is that is that what's going on? Because he... Didn't Angry Birds get discontinued? Can you still play that? I don't know. Every point that he makes has nothing to do with the video we're watching. They want to weigh you and encourage you to make, by your own admission, healthy dietary choices. This is a great, the left always talks about Big Pharma and how much they, they wait. Oh God, oh God, bring it in. Oh God. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with the doctor saying that you should probably lose weight if you want to be healthier. There's nothing wrong with that. At all. Okay. So then you don't really disagree with that much of Crowder's video. Generally speaking, being overweight makes you less healthy. More uh, more weight that your heart needs to support weighs down your joints and your feet and stuff. Yeah, of course. But very often people come in with problems that are not just obesity and then they get told it's just obesity. The doctor's bias prevents them from accurately diagnosing the patient. Way to take a pill to feel better. She's literally talking about doctor shopping and going in looking for a prescription for yeah. an easily solvable problem. What did she ever? 
Guys, I'm sorry. Maybe I blacked out, or maybe it was because I was screaming in a Cockney accent over the last thing she said. Please, answer in the chat. I really want to know. Did she say, and thin privilege is not, thin privilege is not having to doctor shop so I can find a weight loss pill? Did she ever say that? That she's upset that she has to look around for a doctor that'll give her a prescription that'll help her lose weight? Did she say that? Please, chat, I'm waiting on an answer. I mean, yeah, right. the audio is a little iffy on the video, but I think what she was complaining about is, and you were complaining about it, is that it's difficult for fat people to shop for clothes, and they get weird looks on the subway and at restaurants when they want to eat, like, a six-pack of donuts to themselves. You know, like, if you want to live off of voodoo donuts and you're a fat fuck, people are going <laughs> to raise an eyebrow or two. Like, what do you want, bro? I'm waiting. I'm going to wait until I see a whole bunch of yeses or noes. Whatever, dude. Let's skip past here. You might be lagging. A lot of other... If, if you are significantly overweight, you are obese, it should be the doctor's... It should be mandatory for a first line of defense for the doctor to tell you to stop eating so many Skittles-covered donuts. I mean, it, no. Um, as it turns out... The oh, and there weren't Skittles on there! Mur, 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 I'm Vosh! The most effective way of helping people lose weight is not typically them being, like, harangued by their doctor. Um, also, if you go in and you have a problem which is unrelated to your obesity, what if you have a pain in your stomach that turns out to be the beginning of appendicitis? Do you think that losing weight is gonna... F oh, yeah, oh, just a little bit of appendicitis. I'll just hit up the gym and stop eating so many Cheerios in the morning? No, of course not. The doctor needs to... I can't believe I need to say this. The doctor needs to diagnose the problem. You can't just give a fucking eye... Ch like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, like... And if the doctor is worth anything, they're probably gonna do that. I mean, isn't there, like, medical malpractice suits that can happen if they don't diagnose your... What did he say? Stomach cancer or whatever? Pancreas or whatever the fuck? I don't know, man. Again, like what he's talking about, like I'm not saying I'm not saying it has never happened, but it 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 seems like it's some sort of anecdotal, like hyper focused sort of specialized case that Vox, Mike, or The Guardian or Huffington Post zeroed in on and made into like a viral outrage thing, and this dude and other fat fuck commies like latched onto it as if it's like the norm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Kid, kid comes in being like, ah, oh, ah, oh, shoot, I, my arm really hurts. They've got a broken arm. Doctor gives it a look. You got some scrapes over there. You hurt your arm. Kid's like, yeah, I tripped on it while skateboarding and fell over. It really hurts and it bent over a little bit. I think it might be broken. Doctor says, idiot, scrapes hurt. I'll get you some Neosporin for the scrapes. Get you a band aid. Get the fuck out of here, kid. Don't bring your scrapes to me again. Uh, that's a horrible analogy. I mean, when they do an x-ray, they're going to find that what, when you, uh, oh my God, what? When you go in there with a, with an injury and you tell them that you have an injury skateboarding, they're going to fucking give you an x-ray. I, I, I don't, I mean, I, and when you request certain services, like if the fat person requests like a diagnosis of their stomach problem and they might insist that it has nothing to do with their obesity or whatever, I think similar measures are going to be taken. Maybe it just has to do with like legit communication with your healthcare provider. Idiot. If I were a doctor, but I only found out about the Reese's cups covered donuts. If I, if I he can't get over it, it's just guys. <laughs> guys. Like this dude would be an expert on voodoo donuts, like bacon and sprinkles and voodoo donuts in Portland. This is really simple. They've got all sorts of crazy shit here. These donuts are really fucking good. I mean, they're not good for you. Here, look, M&M's. I'm very glad that you're capable of acknowledging that, Bausch. I don't see any Skittles-covered donuts, but look. Look at this. This is normal. It's just a nice donut. Oh, and look right, right here. There's a donut as big as this motherfucker's head. Oh, gee, I wonder why I'm obese and my feet hurt all the time, supporting my gunt 24 hours a day. Sure. Look, it's popular. Look at all these people outside. Not all of them are morbidly obese. Hashtag not all. Most of them look to be like tr traditionally fucking skinny yuppies. Right, because they're going to voodoo for the novelty. They're not doing it as a diet staple. Right, Vouch. 
And if they are doing it as a diet stable, we're going to look at you as some sort of slob because that's what you are. This is really normal. I don't understand why he's freaking out over this. Wow, here are people inside Voodoo Donuts. Oh, cool. They all look to be within a healthy range of weight. Ah, ama amazing. Right, because they're probably like bike hipsters who bike like 7 to 12 miles a day. Maybe they're like bike couriers in Portland. You know, they, they live a considerable distance away and they biked there. Right? I mean, <laughs> what the f I mean... If you're going to eat like that, you got to do something to negate what you just put in your body. Like, again, like go walking, power walking, running, biking, something like that. Oh, here are people waiting. They're all taking pictures because Voodoo Donuts is really popular. It's something of a tourist attraction. Oh, look at that. Oh, cool. They're all look pretty healthy. This guy looks a little chunky. Oh, my God. Left wing destroyed. What the fuck are they going on about? It's just donuts. <laughs> well, that's the problem, isn't it? If it's just donuts, then you've made a really shitty decadent lifestyle choice. And I don't know. There, again, back to the original point, there's a limited amount of empathy uh, society should have for you, in my opinion. A little bit of compassion, you know, a lot more compassion. Like, let's help you out. But you really got to be willing to help yourself, man. I have known that that was a thing, okay, uh, before this last week. He, he's never heard of it. He's independently wealthy, and he's never heard of a good donut shop. I am actually really confused. What is the point of wealth if not eating, like, cool food? I'm not just... Oh, wait, what's the point? <laughs> uh, buying a dope-ass house. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure Steven Crowder's the kind of guy who wants to drive around in a big-ass SUV, although I, I would not agree with that. Personally, but whatever. Uh, he probably likes to buy guns as per the T-shirt that he's wearing. Um, again, I, I think he, I, what is it, the third time I'm bringing this up? He's got some sort of condition. I don't know the name of it. But if he eats pretty much any degree of voodoo donuts, he's going to be like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, which you can kind of already see in his face. You could, you could sort of see like the outline or the shadow of like a fat face in the dude. So it probably hits close to home for the dude. Blue donuts is better than voodoo donuts, IMO. Um, wh what is the point? What is the point? And I were a doctor, and someone came in looking, looking like you. Uh, my first question in the question would be, hmm, have you been eating donuts covered in Reese's peanut butter cups? <laughs> That'll make, make you a bad doctor. doctor. If a fat, like, again, thin privilege, if a fat person walks into, like, a, 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 the checkup room and the doctor comes in, they're like, <laughs> been eating a lot of donuts lately? Ooh! Okay, obvious. Dude, is he intentionally missing the point perpetually? Steven Crowder is affecting, like, a goofy persona, and he's not literally saying that the doctor's like, oh, fat fucking douchebag, eating donuts? Like, they're gonna ask you in a less crass way or whatever. They're not going to ask. Is he imagining that your doctor is going to act like Steven Crowder, like right in the office? Like he's going to be like, oh, you fat fuck. No, they're going to ask you like, well, what's your diet like? What is your exercise routine like? You know, upon seeing that you are five foot nothing and you weigh like 250 to 300 pounds, they're going to ask you fuck. I don't know. How are you a bad doctor for doing that? P please explain, Val. That's, that's thin privilege, buddy. When doctors treat you like shit for no reason. Treat <laughs> you like shit? No. What? <laughs> It'd be like asking if the dog got into a choking hazard. I'm not comparing you to a dog, but it's the first thing that a vet usually asks. Is there something yeah. going on? Has he yeah. been in any weird food lately? I yeah. would say, oh, okay. Well, your BMI is 94. Have you been eating any donuts slathered in Reese's peanut butter cups and Skittles? <laughs> If a person comes into a doctor's office and they're like, hey, I've been experiencing uh, health problems that I believe are related to my obesity. Can you give me any suggestions as to how to lose weight? Then the doctor is free to go ham, okay? Please, doctor, help that person out, okay? Um, but if you're coming in there with a medical problem and you want your medical problem looked at and all your doctor does is see your fat and go, haha, you're fat, lose weight fatty. That's a bad doctor who is not following the Hippocratic Oath because they are doing harm by failing to diagnose you as thoroughly as they okay, would. Okay, but right. But I mean, you're taking this cartoonish, like, you're projecting what Steven Crowder acts like on his show and you're acting like 
um, doctors conduct themselves like that on a regular basis. Like, I would agree. Like, okay, if, if a doctor is conducting himself the way that a fucking uh, raunchy conservative comedian conducts himself on his show, right, he's not following the Hippocratic Oath. But, again, that's not the way they conduct themselves generally, I don't think. A thin person. It is totally okay for a doctor to look at a fat person, hear a problem that might be related to obesity, and then engage in a full diagnosis just to make sure that's the case. Because that is the same privilege they would afford a thin person. <laughs> she goes on with other uh, problems. With the Let's see what else she has to say. You say that healthy and thinner people deserve this privilege because this whole thing actually has nothing to do with anybody's health. I'm so ready for Steven Crowder to pretend that he's just a magnanimous fucking um, half saint, half doctor wandering the earth trying to help fat people lose weight by calling them mean names. Christmas morning. Okay, well, I'm waiting for the leftists to act like oh, we're just a bunch of, uh, we're concerned about your mental health, right-wingers. Like, who hurt you? Who hurt you? So sad. Like, when they pull that faux concern trolling bullshit, like, as if to suggest that anyone who disagrees with leftism has some sort of, like, mental or emotional defect when they pull that bullshit all the time. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for their armchair psychology, which Vouch has engaged in in this video. I'm waiting for you guys to act as if you're, you know, some, some five-star fucking psychiatrist who can diagnose anyone's mental problems simply because they don't like leftist fucking, you know, faux victimhood status. Just in the same way as someone's bigger, there's no way that you could diagnose someone's heart just by looking at them. Let's do it. No, that's wrong. wrong. That's wrong. Yeah, that's, that's again, wrong. she's speaking in these absolutes. There's no, this has nothing, nothing. to do with anybody's health. Okay. No. Nope. Nice try. She never said weight had nothing to do with somebody's health. She said you can never diagnose somebody's health just by looking at them, which is true. You can look at a morbidly obese person and not know what the state of their heart is, whether or not... It's not just by looking at them. It's partially, I mean, it's initially looking at them, but then the procedures follow they have any form of cancer, any sort of internal malignant disease, any kind of infections, illnesses, abscesses, cysts, none of these things. You can't look at a person, well, I mean, if they were naked and you gave them a good look over, but if they're like clothed and you just walk by them, you can't know any of these things just by looking at them. Doctors need to be thorough. Wait, does, does Bausch seriously think that Crowder thinks that random motherfuckers on the street viewing fully clothed fat people. Does, does he legitimately think that Crowder thinks that those people have the ability to diagnose medical problems? It's like he's accusing Crowder of a straw man while engaging in multiple straw men himself. Health is complicated. There are some exceptions, but this has something to do with a lot of people's health. And by the way, even excluding other risk factors. Yeah, obesity is related to health always, but that does not mean you can just look at a person and know what is wrong and what is right with them just by observing their weight. But why do you got to be so overcomplicated? If you see an obese person, you know they're unhealthy. What, what is so difficult about this, Vouch? Factors just wait. You have a high risk of heart disease, stroke, heart failure, yeah. diabetes, period. Absolutely. Just wait. Yeah, again. Again. Uh, Steven Crowder coming out with the arguments that have nothing to do with the woman's video. She never said that being fat isn't necessarily unhealthy. This is it. This is four for four. Then why the pride, the fat pride movement? If it's, if it's, if you're acknowledging that it's unhealthy, then why the pride and the confidence, the faux confidence and the bombast associated with it. I, I don't I don't understand that. Why, why the sense of like, oh yeah, I'm a strong, independent woman, fish, bicycle, don't need no man, just a fat chick at a donut shop, at a novelty donut shop, look at me. If you're acknowledging that it's horrible for you, then why, why all this extra fluff, if you will? Steven Crowder just doesn't, he doesn't engage. He just, 
It's NPC. No internal dialogue. No thought process whatsoever. Steven Crowder barely meets the biological definition of a human being. Because he hears something that he thinks, like, oh, I disagree with this. And then he thinks of all the, like, funny jokes that he can make. All the talking points. All the little bumper car stickers he can throw up in the way. I know that BMI is on an accurate scale. I know that I would be considered seriously overweight because at six foot two, I'm sure like 180 or yeah, something like that. Sure I get that. That being said, I also accept that when I get older, it's better for me to be thinner regardless of whether that's muscle, fat, period. Your body doesn't want to carry that much weight. And no, this has nothing to do with the video. When it's exclusively fat. It, it just has to do with generally just health and how we shouldn't be, you know, using the media to excuse or encourage or say you go girl to fat chicks <laughs> we shouldn't be doing that that for reasons covered donuts <laughs> he can't should i be concerned for steven crowder who hurt you is there like is this like a is he a robot i ge i genuinely don't understand i guarantee you that every day of his life he eats a meal that has like far more calories and sugar and fat than, than the donut that that woman ate. And I guarantee you that as a wealthy person, he probably engages in, in like parfait delicacy, you know, like uh, dessert specialty foods for now and again. I, I don't, I get, yeah, like this is NPC behavior. Like someone wrote this line of code in his head and he just has to bring it up every time he can now. Dude, I mean, a large person who's trying to act like they're proud of being large, eating a donut that is the size of their head. I mean, it's it's noteworthy. Like, <laughs> it may be a normal fixture of your life, but other people are gonna <laughs> they're gonna turn a few heads, man. I don't know what to say. <laughs> that would that would be considered excessive. And by the way, right. you live in a country that has a nationalized health care. Uh, <laughs> There's plan, no okay? excuses. Where they, have, they have a much higher mortality rate from all diseases yeah. and all yeah. risk related factors than the United States, and even worse wait times. Okay, so let me. Like what? Right. I mean, they they do have wait times for elective procedures and checkups and stuff in. Uh, I believe in the UK and in Canada, that's that's definitely a flaw of uh, universal health care. Is he saying that the NHS, ri widely regarded as one of the best medical services in the world, in, in this country, everyone has worse outcomes in, in medical care? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead... And I'm going to say that unless sources are provided, that's just a fact. That's just a factual lie. I think that. Yeah, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I mean, I'm pretty sure that if you offer the entire country health care, you are going to be dealing with wait times. It was just a factual lie that he just threw my way. The idea that, uh, and it's complete, again, it's unrelated to the discussion. He just, again, NPC talking points. He's got to think like, oh, here's an opportunity for me to shit on nationalized health care. So he thinks about it like, uh, in spite of living in Britain, which is like bad, the medical system bad in every way. People die all the, all the time, all the time over there, all and wait times. And then he continues on. No consistent... Thought process, no cohesive structure to his eye, just he just whatever comes to his head. You know, Vouch, can you stop being ableist? I mean, Stephen Crowder is quite clearly, uh, you know, an ADD or autism type person. Can, can you please be more intersectional, Vouch? Let me just say, if a private Check your privilege. Sure, in the United States can ask me whether I smoke, how, what my BMI is, what my ha I think yeah. it's perfectly acceptable, perfectly along the trail of logic for a socialized healthcare program to say, are you eating uh, donuts covered in Skittles? <laughs> <laughs> there were no Skittles. What the fuck is he saying? Wait, so he's saying that if privatized healthcare systems can ask questions related to your health, that socialized healthcare systems can do the same? Okay, they, they do? I'm, okay, listen, I'm going to be honest, I've never... Are you saying they... I mean, it seems like you're saying they shouldn't, and that's, like, fatism. Been to England. Fat phobia. I'm pretty sure that in England, they'll, the doctors will also ask you if you smoke. And they don't ask you your BMI, you fucking dumb fuck. Um, but nobody uses BMI medically. It's just a little fucking internet test you take. BMI is a terrible way of assessing a person's health. But they'll weigh you if, if, if they feel it necessary for what they're doing. Does he, th does he think they don't? Or is he making, like, a facetious point about how this woman has access to medical services, so how can she be fat? I have no idea.
I mean, it's, it's I guess to an American in a in a country that has universal health care and is supposedly like uber healthy, but it is odd to see like excessive obesity, right? Why wouldn't it be? And we, I mean, we do know that in European countries they have different cultural norms, like they have lower portion sizes with their food and stuff like that. I mean, it is just sort of odd to, you know, it, it's. It's it's not like in America where like every other motherfucker is like <laughs> like a truck, like a dump truck for an ass. I, I don't. <sighs> <laughs> Maybe we're going to make an exemption for diseases related to. Let me see. Yes, the donuts covered in skittles. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. I don't. I don't know what to do. I, my brain is shutting down. Is is NPC dumb like infectious? I don't know how to respond to this non-argument repeated over and over and over again. Right, it's a non-argument, and you're responding with a non-argument, and I guess I'm responding by throwing my hands up and just questioning why you're being so pedantic or super semantics obsessed about the Skittles aspect. It, it really is an analysis that a fat person would bring to the table. Well, it's not Skittles, it's peanut butter cups. Right, right, Vouch. Yes, we get it. it it's... It's not the candy that he says it is. Move on. And, you know, Crowder can move on, too. He can come up with a different joke. Oh, I don't know how to respond to it. He can't stop. Exactly. <laughs> All right, anyway, but the, the, again, the whole point... Also, he, he correctly identified that it was a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup donut earlier, but now he's back to saying Skittles. God, I'm just Does he have Alzheimer's? Is this an early onset? Is this a tragic engineering to tell people that what they think is true isn't? Why? Because feelings. For you. What? I genuinely don't understand what, what point he's trying to to make there. Um, that all of this is due to your subjective view of yourself and how you want society, or you're demanding society to, I guess, turn the other way or not visually observe the fact that reality is what reality is. It's, it's subjective, not objective. I'm actually trying to process it in my head. Is she trying to tell the world like everyone knows thin privilege isn't a thing and she's trying to tell them otherwise? I genuinely don't understand. I think Are you kidding me? Are all the cops? I think I think, I think maybe Steven Crowder thinks that this woman like cuz he cuz again as we established he's not actually paying attention to the video. He can't hear it. Do you think that he thinks she's saying that like there's no such thing like you can't like being fat or being obese isn't unhealthy and that being thin means nothing and that fat means nothing and nothing means nothing and that's how it's social engineering i genuinely can't get inside his head well i would try putting myself in your triple wide get ready for it proving again the thin privilege by just making fun of people for being fat choose but i don't want to die <laughs> It would require years of eating Skittles covered donuts. Oh, it's not Skittles. Oh, my God. Oh, you made a joke. Man. And this guy also makes, you know, jokes about people's appearance as well. So, whatever. He says Skittles again. Again? He can't do it. He can't stop. <laughs> Guys, I think he's broken. Right. I mean, okay. Crowder could definitely use some variety in his jokes in this segment. But uh, you could use, like, a little less pedantry. Something in him is broken. There's like a repeat, like a, like a syntax error or somebody forgot a fucking semicolon somewhere. Holy shit. And it's back to, so he repeated it again. It's back to Skittles. Also, being fat doesn't increase your foot size? Like, at all? Like, maybe if you're morbidly obese by like a single size, but I'm pretty sure that feet stay this, about the same size. Okay, so Vouch is getting into the whole territory where he's, like, honking at the joke and, like, derailing it. Which, I mean, the joke was already dead due to the fact that Crowder repeated it, like, seven times. But, you know, he, you can tell this is the kind of guy who you're hanging out and you tell a, a joke and he, like, clotheslines the premise of the joke and ruins it and makes it, like, less funny than it already was. The reason why you... 
you know, the whole. You wouldn't want to put your feet in her shoes is because she's a woman and probably has smaller shoes, not because she's fat. Are you employing... Wait. So, wait. We have to break down how fucking stupid this argument is, okay? It's paint time. It's not an argument. It's a joke. This might actually be the dumbest attempt at a joke I have ever seen in my life, okay? So I'm gonna draw... I'm gonna draw... <laughs> He's gonna do an expose on the dude's joke. I can't even believe I've gotten this far. A, la a lady's shoe, okay? Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind that Crowder likes to dress up in ladies' uh, attire, so this is, uh, this is like an extra... Uh, okay, this is the... Multi-layered, multi-faceted, uh, multi... Shoe the like multifaceted mouth he was wearing. Okay, uh, probably I don't fucking know. All right, there we go. We did it. Okay, this is it. And wait, we wanna. There we go. Okay. So this is the this is what she was wearing. And, I don't really give a shit about the and shoe he deconstruction of the that shoe joke because this she's is so stupid. Fat, Let me just skip ahead here. Her shoe would look. Like you how could that then or how could make them feel? Let's hear it again. Oh, we gotta hear it again. I would try putting myself in your triple wide shoes. Oh my God. Triple wide. Triple wide shoes. See? Somebody said that by put... Somebody in chat said that by putting himself in her shoes, he interpreted that as like, oh, he would be obese too, but he would die trying. That's not what he means. He means that he thinks her being fat makes her shoes bigger, and that her shoes being bigger meaning it would be harder to put his feet in there. Don't want to die. <laughs> It would require years of eating Skittles, covered donuts, not exercising, sitting on the couch all day, and not going to a doctor. Okay? okay. That's why I'm not... Th and by the way, this is different than saying... Also, I don't think she's, like, that crazy fat or anything. Like, she's fat, don't get me wrong, but the way he's talking is... It's like when she's one of those bed sore ridden cases, you know? Hey, imagine... Wow, wow. Okay, let's... You could put yourself in the shoes of, like, someone who lost their limbs in a war. Right. Arms in a war. Obviously, they wouldn't have shoes if they lost their legs in a war. I don't know. Sometimes they have shoes in the nub. You I don't limbs, know. You're good. Limbs is good. Uh, imagine putting yourself in the shoes of, I don't know, someone who's autistic, someone with cerebral palsy. Everyone has empathy for those people. I don't have empathy for amputees who got their limbs blown off trying to kill brown people out in the Middle East. Oh, what a faggot, dude. Really trying to kill brown people in the Middle East? Get out of here. I like Vouch considerably less now. That is like the dumbest fucking segue ever, dude. So you, you you literally feel no empathy for veterans who get their limbs blown off because you just immediately associate it with them sadistically blowing up brown people because that's your pet demographic? Oh my goodness. But you feel empathy for someone who chooses to eat voodoo donuts three square a day? Get out of here, man. But we, we reserve our empathy, and I would say rightfully so, for people who've been dealt a bad hand through no fault of their own. Oh, I mean... Right, so that's that's where privilege or lack thereof comes in. If you're genuinely disabled, but you're trying to put like the fat acceptance movement seems to be trying to put like people who choose to be fat due to lifestyle choices, they're trying to put them in the same category as people who have, you know, natural disabilities. Like it's not it's not the same thing and it's sort of insulting, isn't it, to 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 imply even that it's the same category. Really? Wow, is this looking into the mind of a, of a, of a sociopath? Um, we reserve our empathy only for people who arrive at misfortune through no fault of their own? Is this why you don't... You just fucking said that you don't have empathy for veterans who get their legs blown off. Because you immediately assume they're blowing up brown people. Oh my goodness. You care about, like, criminals, criminals or, or black, black people or trans, trans people, people or gay people because they, they all choose to be gay or trans or, or poor or black or whatever? Or whatever. I, like, like, I don't... What? Now he's putting skin color and sexual orientation and or like sexual predisposition or kinks or whatever in the same category. Like, does he think that being fat is immutable? That's that's why they brought up the genetic. That's why Crowder brought up the genetic issue earlier, because that would put it in the same category as skin color or any other immutable characteristic. If you can't help it. Then it would be in the same category, but you can help it in this instance. You can help to not eat peanut butter cup donuts. You could choose to not do that. I think that that's the core of the argument here. It's, oh my God, dude. I have no idea. 
I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that much is obvious, Valsh. You have no idea. But the idea that you can only feel empathy for people whose misfortune is brought about by by misfortune, uh, like by by circumstance over which they had no control, is is fundamentally false. We have family members, friends, even people we've never heard of who come across unfortunate circumstances in their life, which they probably could have prevented. It's fine to feel empathy for these people. Life is right, but you might feel less. I mean, especially if they continuously like lack the wherewithal or the desire or the drive to help themselves. What is diff- What is difficult about this? It's tough and people don't make perfect decisions all the time. I would only have to explain this to a sociopath. No, it's not that it's not that you're occasionally making bad decisions like every other person. If it's a pattern constant, it's like an alcoholic basically up to a certain point you lack, like you start lacking empathy and even compassion for the person because if they demonstrate a lack of uh, desire to change themselves and they're inconveniencing everyone around them with their drunk ass, then how is that being a sociopath if you say, you know what, you don't want to help yourself, fine. Like, get out of here. Like, I... And I do think... Does he really not understand the difference between someone who was dealt a shit hand and someone who fucked themselves over? through carelessness or bad decisions, a pattern of bad decisions, really? I think that Steven Crowder is some kind of, like, he has some sort of antisocial disorder, some sort of deficiency in the brain, one which affects, apparently, his empathy and his ability to make jokes. That was ableist. This woman, you are, because you probably see this video, we get a takedown notice every time we do a fat pride video. Right. You get, you you probably get a takedown notice on every video that you do, buddy. You're a huge channel. Somebody is going to file a report, okay? Considered somehow emotional abuse. Which, you know, side tangent, but that's a huge flaw of YouTube, isn't it? And it's probably something that affects conservative channels disproportionately. You are not amongst them. Well, it's like... Because, well, at least on uh, Twitter, there's entire accounts, like Antifa accounts, whose only purpose is to dox and harass and threaten people. And they still exist. So... Having a... Yeah. So again, thin privilege. Not only are fat people ridiculed, they are also deprived of empathy. You, you cannot, cannot be empathetic, empathetic for a fat person, person, or towards a fat person, according to Steven Crowder. You can, but again, just probably less than someone who has a genetic predisposition to be fat, which is the exception and not the rule. Kid who is out of control and demands to be praised, right? Listen, some, for example, if this one went out what? there, and I think I, I've talked about this, sometimes it almost brings a tear to my eye when I'm at the gym and I see really overweight people struggling on the treadmill, yeah. struggling to lift weights. Yeah. And I've had friends who've gone to the gym, it was very, very hard for them. And what actually, are we talking about right now? Try to help them along the trail. Nobody faults you for that. No. But if, He's talking about compassion versus empathy, dude. Like, you want to help a fat person out of their situation if they're willing and ready. You want to, you know, you want to work out with them. You want to, like, be diet buddies with them. That sort of thing. Like, you want to be a, 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 what's the term? Like, a spotter or something. Like, that's a common thing. That's a healthy thing. That's a good practice. If you refuse to do... Yeah, people do. Fat people get shit on all the time for eating healthier and for going to the gym. Are you kidding me? Do you really think fat people don't get shit on for going to the gym? Are you kidding me? I mean, not for me and the people I know. I mean, I know that's anecdotal and everything, but so is it for you. Uh, I see a fat person jogging or whatever, and I say, like, good on them. They're jogging in the right direction. I hope they keep it up. Is that a... You know, compassion, not just blanket empathy for the sake of virtue signaling. A fucking joke? Jesus Christ. Every single fucking... Back when I went to the gym, every single time a fat person came in, everyone would give them the fucking side eye. Okay, well, of course not everyone. Some people there weren't dipshits. But a lot of people would give them the side eye. I've seen tons of... Oh, the side eye. The horror. Jokes on the internet, on 4chan, on bodybuilding.com's forums, on Reddit, on Twitter, on Instagram. uh, All, like, all of them. In all of these places, have I seen comments to the effect of, haha, isn't it pathetic that they're trying? People absolutely make fun of fat people for going to the gym and for eating healthier. Come on. 
do it and then demand that people praise you, it's like a kid who no one can stand because no, literally no, literally nobody has demanded you praise them for being fat. Again, I don't know. Then what is fat pride and fat acceptance and fat validation, healthy at any size, like, oh, I'm confident, snap back, fish by a skull, don't need no men, I'm going to eat a fucking voodoo donut. Like, what is that then? If not asking for or demanding validation, Bausch. Come on, man. Where are you getting this from? But I look forward to you saying Skittle Donuts again before the end of the video. They don't want to reward any behavior because we're supposed to reward all behavior. Yeah. Right. And by the way, this what? goes both ways. My wife is naturally very thin. Uh, she gets a lot of flack for it. We've talked about this. Yeah. She had a complex right now because people would imply that she had some kind of eating disorder. You've yeah. seen her parents. They're all yeah. tall and thin. Yeah, Six absolutely. foot and thin. She's naturally that way. I can't tell you how many women I've had uh, around her saying, mm, we only carry sizes for real women or you need to eat a sandwich. <laughs> so are you saying... Are you suggesting then that fat privilege exists, but not thin privilege? I, I think he's just saying that, you know, there's anecdotal instances that people might give you the side eye and we have compassion for that. But it's just, I, I, I don't know. Again, like, it's not that big of a deal, probably. Kind of proving the point here, Steven Crowder, because if the only argument you can make that fat, that thin privilege doesn't exist is that thin people get mocked for being thin too, all you're saying is that it can go both ways. <laughs> well, that the mockery is very innocuous and, like, whatever. Like, yeah, you see a thin person, you want to maybe feed him a little bit, you know, give him a... A bacon cheeseburger, a uh, voodoo donut. Oh, God, I'm getting fat just thinking about that. Um, I'm getting hungry, too. Holy crap. This happens all the time. Listen, yeah. you don't think that that... The only and, and, and by the way, I like the false equivalency here. Suggesting that thin people get made fun of anywhere near as much as fat people. The difference is, she's within the... She is thinner. Or she was when she was younger, right? Now yeah. she wouldn't know it when you look at her. But when she was younger and she grew up really quickly, she was thinner, but she was well within the bounds of health. And that's something else. By the way, men do not expect women to be perfect, just as no. you don't expect men to be perfect. Hopefully women out there don't expect all men to have a six-pack that comes with weeks of dieting down and diuretics and getting into a hot tub with wintergreen so you can... Just weeks? I think that, I think getting a six-pack takes a little bit more. You gotta, like, do a... Like diet next unless you naturally have abs but if you're like a regular dude getting abs is like a pretty big pro okay this is irrelevant you have veins <laughs> right. your lower abdomen <laughs> oh, we no, hope no, you no, don't no, expect no. that just like we don't expect all of you to look like a cover model we do however find ourselves biologically more attracted to women who fit within the good news is a very wide spectrum of weights shapes and sizes Okay, even if that was the case, and there are plenty of historical examples to suggest that it's not the case, Rubenesque women and all that, and how chunky people and uh, how, like, fat, pale lords and landed aristocrats of the medieval ages had a tendency to, oh, find themselves with uh, plenty of female attraction. Um, even if this was the case, what does your attraction have to do with whether or not you have a right to insult people? He's a comedian. It's, what do you mean? You insult people. Ugh, whatever, man. It is whatever. As long as they are healthy. And just that... like all, just like Jesse Small... We, we only like healthy people? Is that true? There are plenty of unhealthy trends that gain popularity um, in health. I'm not really researched on this topic. I'd have to look it up to... Generally, we tend to... This is going to get tedious. But generally, we tend to respect people that we can tell are healthy just generally speaking, we tend to regard them as having, again, a large degree of self, or like at least a somewhat degree of self-discipline. Um, they look good. They probably smell better, honestly. Uh, there's a whole litany of things. Engage with it a little bit more thoroughly, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty fucking confident that throughout history, people have done shit that is unhealthy to make themselves more attractive. What about, like, the foot binding they used to do in China? They thought that was extremely attractive, to break back the foot, to turn into, like, a little ball, because women's feet were supposed to be a little tiny and dainty. That's what the dudes would nut over, you know? This is just, like, one big fat foot fetish video. Uh, Vosh, what's the point of responding to these kinds of videos? Don't you understand these videos are intended as distractions for real problems? Is this a kind of praxis I'm not aware of? Yes. Again, it's about effective, efficacious rhetoric. A video like this is pretty tangential to real problems. Like, nothing's really being fought over here, apart from not being a dick to fat people, I guess. But it is important to be able to listen to somebody like Steven Crowder, pick up on their habits, 
mannerisms, rhetorical tendencies, and be able to shit on them very effectively and, and in an amusing and approachable way. Plus, if I make a video about this, which I will, people can watch that video, listen to me talk, and they can be like, wow, Steven Crowder is actually kind of a fucking idiot. And Yeah, but I mean, you're both idiots because you're whining about fat people not being uh, validated. Steven Crowder's an idiot because he's making the same Skittles joke 18 times in a row. I'm an idiot for responding to you responding to Steven Crowder responding to some fat British chick. So it's like four times the response idiocy. Then they'll stop taking him seriously on other issues. Yes, reactionary should be fought off on every front at all times. There is no rest. Not for them and not for us. <laughs> this dude thinks he's like a soldier in some like legit war against the anti-fat police. Fake crimes and poop swastika in Covington. What happens here is when you go out there and you demand that everybody praise you and you claim a new marginalized status. You Wait, literally, no what the fuck is he going on about? You hurt people who are actually marginalized. And here's the thing. Who's actually marginalized that you care about hurting? This is a... He already said so. People who have actual disabilities and stuff that are getting the waters muddied by all this fucking new new school like oh feel sorry for me because i choose to be a fat fuck like you're trying to act as if these people are marginalized by society and not their own shitty decisions as opposed to again someone who's like either physically disabled you know naturally or uh, mentally retarded or whatever has a genuine health issue that's not self-inflicted if you want to put those two things in the same category that sort of like confuses the situation muddies the waters a little bit such a classic reactionary argument by the way oh when you say you were raped just because he slipped his cock into your asshole while you were passed out in a bed you're lessening the severity of rape of when the six blacks attacked the white woman that one time it's the same it's the whataboutism it doesn't matter e what there's an empathy I, I, I don't even want to touch that one bank for everybody a lot of people don't like to admit this but we have a certain bandwidth of empathy and we can't just be passing out empathy like donuts covered in skittles and he did it again yes! <laughs> yes he did it again yes one more time before the video what is that seven eight times over the course of the video it, it was a solid several times that he made the same skittles covered donut joke skittle donuts which which were not present in the video Oh, Steve, oh, Steven Crowder, oh, 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 you're edging me, I'm gonna, mm. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking crowning, I'm gonna splat, oh, God. Crowning, gonna splat, dude. Tenth time, I don't know, I'll go over it in editing, okay? Also, Steven Crowder's right to an extent, you can't feel individual empathy for everyone, but you can extend empathy to groups of people. I have no trouble being empathetic for marginalized people. I'm even empathetic to reactionaries and Nazis to an extent. Oh, I care about you. Where are you? Product of their circumstances. Sorry, Steven Crowder, if you've got a problem with empathy, it's not hard for me. So, we reserve the right to not give it to you because we want to give it to the veteran who had an arm blown off in Vietnam, or... Okay. Well, this is like the highest what about is. I'm like, oh, hey, Steven Crowder, why are you a dick to fat people? Because if I was nice to them, I'd have to be a dick to Vietnam veterans. Which you are, because you just, your a priori assumption is that they arbitrarily blow up brown people for fun. So, kind of fuck you. All right. This, this was my attitude toward veterans when I was, like, a 19-year-old punk who thought that, like, anti-flag and propaganda lyrics were insightful, <laughs> like, in no effects. Like, but this dude's, like, a 30-some-year-old neckbeard who thinks very similarly, I guess. You do you, Stephen. Or you reserve it for somebody who might have some kind of a degenerate brain disease that can't help it. You ate too many Skittles covered donuts. Again! <laughs> he did it again. Oh, I'm doing it! I'm gonna come! <laughs> no. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, that was a good nut. That was a, that was a big nut. That's a big blast right there.
Okay. Oh. Anything else? <laughs> All right. So that was my first attempt at a little bit of a response video. I got this OBS thing going on. Still learning how to use it a little bit. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Just let me know if you like this format. I might try to do a little bit more of it. Uh, subscribe, bitch. Hit the notification bell. Donate to me on patreon.com slash uh, Daniel Durst or uh, paypal.me slash Durst Durst, I believe it is. It should be in the description. Um, yeah. Subscribe, bitch. <laughs>